Last month, if you remember, I weighed in at 320. And uh, this month, I'm actually weighing in a day early because we got to go to my brother's tonight for a birthday party. So I'm probably going to end up eating some stuff. This month, I have continued to lose the weight, um, although it's been kind of up and down. At one point, I was down to 310, and I really thought I was going to hit that 300 mark this month. But uh, it went back up, and it went down, and it went back up, and it ends today at. 314 was my way in so I guess we had to call it a six pound loss but I can still tell that physically it's coming off really good because I'm gonna post a picture right here to show you uh, this picture I took this morning of myself standing in one leg of the shorts I wore to South Carolina when I was almost 400 pounds and that'll show you like how far I've come. And in this picture, it looks like I'm stretching the pants out, but I'm not. They're not, uh, it's not an elastic waist. I'm just holding it out. Maslin, Ohio is known for football. Um, it is debatably the place where pro football started. Like the high school football team, when they play McKinley, Canton McKinley Bulldogs, um, they, that game is so important that it's actually on the betting lines in Las Vegas. And as far as I understand, there are no other high school games on the betting lines in Las Vegas at all. So this is how big football is in Maslin. And I'm not a big football person, but I do enjoy going to the games. 
you know, it's fun, it's always packed, it's a great environment and experience, and even their uh, their mascot, they have a live tiger at the games. So it's, it's really fun, you know, they have a calliope playing and everything, and it's just really fun. If you've never been to a Maslin football game, uh, you should go sometime, even if you're not a football fan. It's just, it's really fun, it's a great environment. Um, but to me, Maslin holds a totally different place in my heart. Maslin is the place where I made the biggest change in my life, which basically led to who I am today. I mean, let me let me restate that. I am who I am, and I have I would have always been who I am, but skateboarding played an enormous part in my life and I was introduced to skating when I came to Maslin, Ohio. I think that's a better way to put it. Because I don't want to like give Maslin or skating credit for who I personally am inside. But I did want to take uh, the opportunity in this video to tell you the story of how I discovered skateboarding or how skateboarding discovered me. Um, however you want to put it. I've kind of gone back and forth with with how to describe that, um, because the story is, it's a good story, it's really cool. Basically, my dad's a preacher, so we kind of bounced around um, in my young life, up until I was 11 years old. We lived in little country towns um, where, you know, there really was no such thing as style. And when we came to Maslin, I was 11 years old. It was uh, the summer before I went to seventh grade. And I dressed how I knew, you know, which was just this kind of country, country clothes. You know, it, it was style was never a big deal where we came from. Plus, we were pretty poor. So we didn't have a ton of money to go out buying, you know, big expensive, you know, Nikes and, and name, name brand clothing. Honestly, I don't even think I knew there was a such thing as name brand clothing at that time. But uh, we started school, and when I say we because I have a brother and a sister as well. But when we started school, I was in seventh grade, and we used to get teased because of the way we dressed and the way we looked. And people actually spread the rumor that we were Amish, and we got dropped off in an Amish buggy. Um, one of the guys who used to tease me about that uh, all the time, his name is Andy, and he's one of my good friends today. Um, I always laugh about the kind of stuff that we teased each other about, because I'm, I was never the kind of person to be hurt when somebody teased me. You know, it just, it was always funny to me, the kind of stuff they came up with. Like, Andy was always teasing me about how fat I was and how round I was, and he was this tall, stick-thin thing who had an enormous smile that was so big that it basically left the sides of his face because it was so big. And so, you know, I just teased him right back about that. And we actually ended up becoming pretty good friends. So, um, but anyways, throughout seventh grade, I was teased a lot by football players and just, you know, the popular kids about the way I dressed, the way I looked, the way I acted. And I didn't know how to get in with these guys. I didn't know how to change that. We didn't have the money to go buy expensive clothes. And I remember specifically, one of the things I was teased about was because I didn't wear Nikes. And, uh, you know, I wore Payless shoes, which were like the Pro Wings, the generic version of Michael Jordan shoes. So, made it through 7th grade, and the summer between 7th and 8th grade, uh, my whole family, we just took a couple nights out and we went to a hotel in Canton, I believe it was, and it was, I think it was the Sheraton, and because uh, we just kind of did that every once in a while, just to get out, to get away from home, to go have some fun and go swimming and that, and while we were there, 
my brother and I met a kid at the pool, and we got to talking to him about what was popular in his school. And I remember him saying things like in excess and skateboarding. And uh, I remember him saying he was a thrasher and asking us if we had skateboards and if we could do a 180, if we could do a 360. And this was all foreign to me. I had no idea what any of this stuff meant, but I did absorb it. And I remember thinking, well, thrasher must be like some kind of a rank in skateboarding. You know, like if you can do a 180 or a 360, you must be a thrasher. And, you know, to me, being young and impressionable, I, I must have just thought that there was different things you'd be called in skateboarding if you could do different tricks. I don't know, that sounds corny, but I love it. It's part of the story. So, we hung out with this kid. We played video games with him. In fact, one of the pictures I'm going to show you right now is a picture of me uh, with the high score on this one specific video game this exact trip to the Sheraton that I'm talking about. You can see my clothes, my hair, which I used to get called breadhead because my hair was parted in the middle. <laughs> Man, the kind of stuff that people come up with when they're making fun of you is, is funny. But, uh, so from that point, we left the hotel and at some point between then and starting school, we were shopping at a now defunct shopping mall called Millette Mall in Canton. It's actually the mall that I filmed my Pokemon Go video at. If you want to look back through there, you can see it. It's abandoned now. The front has been completely rebuilt and remodeled but the back of it is still just abandoned and crumbling and falling down. And I've worked my way into that mall and it is black mold everywhere. The ceilings are falling down. Everything is crumbling. It's crazy, but I love that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> we were at that mall at a store called Montgomery Wards. I don't even know if that store exists anymore anywhere, but that's where we were at. And we were looking around, and what caught my eye was a pair of airwalks. Now, I immediately saw them, and I immediately connected with that kid from the pool because he wore airwalks, and he said he was popular, and he was a skater, he was a thrasher. And I'm like, Dad, you're buying me these shoes because they were cheap, they were not Nikes, but in my mind, they were gonna get me in a little bit. I had no clue that skaters were their own little clique and that they were hated, maybe even worse than the nerds. <laughs> um, but he bought me a pair of black and white high top uh, airwalks. It had the, uh, what is it, the bird on the side and the little Ollie Airwalk on the back. <clears throat> to this day, for about 15 years, I've been searching eBay for that pair of shoes, and I cannot find them. But when I find them, I'm gonna buy them, and I'm gonna have them displayed in my house. I might even put them in a damn glass box. But uh, I'm gonna tell you the rest of the story as soon as I get to this one location up here. Okay, behind me is the place I wanna tell you guys the rest of the story, but, uh, I'm going to take off the hat and the glasses because I just want to see this place and tell this story through my own eyes. So let's go on over here. I'm crawling around, searching for higher ground. Can't see in front of me, my enemies have tried every possibility, ability to know if I can bleed. If that's what you wanted, you won't get it tonight. So the lot that you see right across the street from me here, 
is where my whole story begins in Maslin. You can see the steps over here, and that's where we used to get dropped off in the morning. If you walked up there, that's where like the front doors were. Just looking at it, I mean, there's just, there's so many memories of, of just this one area. And, and like I said, this, this lot right here, this is where I went to junior high. This is where I started my, my uh, life in Maslin. And it just, it holds such a tight spot in my heart. You know, it's, I'm going to tell you the story. Let's go over there. me that they don't have some kind of a memorial or a sign or something up in this location just identifying it as uh, the old site of the Lauren Andrews Middle School. Right about here is where the front doors would have been I guess. And I remember the very first day that I wore my airwalks I was walking around at these front doors because I, I must have been kind of making a round around the school hoping people would see them or something. And immediately people started calling me a thrasher. And I'm thinking, even though the word was familiar because that kid at the pool, I really didn't know what it meant. And I guess that's really, I, I didn't understand why they were calling me a thrasher first until I got into the school, started my school day, and people were asking me if I'm a skater. And then I started to make the correlation between the shoes and skating, and I thought, okay, well, you know, this kid was a skater, he was a thrasher, and he wore airwalks. I must be a thrasher now. And so I took it and ran. I didn't necessarily do that. I didn't take it and say, okay, this is what's going to make me popular. I'm going to do it. What happened is that I allowed people to refer to me as that, to attach me wearing airwalks with being a skater. Um, but the first person who actually paid any attention to me and spoke to me in a normal tone about being a skater was a, a guy who became a really good friend of mine named Scott Harwig and he asked me if I was a skater and we started talking I don't recall if I said yes to that I think he actually asked me if I had a skateboard and I said yes but it was like this old action sports wizard skateboard that I had got from like hills or something and um, we, like, became friends right then and there at that moment. And he gave me my first real pro deck, which was a Nottis Coppice deck. It was the one that came out right before the Nottis Kitten, which was the first pro deck that I ever bought brand new, the Nottis Kitten. And the thing is, as soon as he kind of accepted me as a skater and we started talking and I became friends with him and his friends and then the whole skater group, um, and I started skating, being accepted into a group was one thing. When I started skating, it was a whole completely different thing. I fell in love with it. It was, and I think most skaters feel like this, when you start skating, you know you have found what you're supposed to do. Because it was so natural, it was so fun. I did it every day, all day long, and it changed my life. Really just an amazing, an amazing time and an amazing place for me to be standing here being introduced to it this way was just an awesome experience and it was really it was 
what I needed at that time in my life. I didn't know anybody when I moved here. And when you're in junior high, everybody knows each other. Everybody's grown up with each other, especially in a town like Maslin. And, uh, and that's what I needed, you know, to find my group of friends. And so that's what happened. My brother started skating at the same time, and he just happened to make friends with other people. He was a little bit younger than me, made friends with other people who also started skating. And so it all just kind of fell into place. And uh, that's, that's the story, man. It, it all is history from there. It all started right here at Lauren Andrews Junior High. And I wish when they were tearing it down, I would have come over here and got a brick, but I didn't. So maybe I can find one on eBay. Cause I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. Yeah. I can fly. Oh my god, I'm so tired. I'm going home. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Show some love and some support for a fat guy trying to lose some weight. Peace, I'm out. Cause I can fly.